I, um, I've been through the, the, a problem. This organization, I just love them to death, but you know, they called me about three, four, three weeks ago and said, we might give you 10 minutes to talk. Well, I said, man, man, a historian needs more time than that. Then a week later, they said, how about getting it down to five minutes? <laughs> and you know what? They came this morning and said, how about three? <laughs> and I said, I can't get my mouth open in that time. <laughs> So I tell you what, guys, I hope nobody's got a stopwatch on me here. Uh, I think tonight, what I, I really want to thank, thank everybody for all the great support that this uh, citizenry of Missouri has given conservation. It's in my blood. It was in my blood. It's been in my blood a long time. Uh, probably be, I need to comment about a, a couple of things. Uh, this. Uh, this, things just don't happen. They, there's a bunch of circumstances that bring about things. Um, I was a 17-year-old guy that was in this room in, 19, in September 10, 1935. And that, the reason I was here was because of my dad. My dad was a master teacher in Mobley Public School System. He was a principal, he was a scientist, he was a, a mathematician. He was a geographer. But even when he taught in his geography tours, in the 20s, he was talking about conservation. And you know, in those days, people couldn't even pronounce it. They called it conversation. <laughs> no fool. They really did. They could not find the right terminology. Well, anyway, what happened, um, as time moves along, my dad, got introduced to somebody. I had a, I was senior in high school, and I had a teacher, her, Esther Adams was her name, PhD out of Missouri. She was a great naturalist. And she was, she was really beginning to stir me up. I was a senior, but she was teaching junior college and senior biology, pre-med, you know, all this kind of stuff. But I, I didn't hardly know where I was headed, but I think I was headed to being a naturalist. But anyway, she said, I think, and this was, now listen here, the, the timing on this. This was February 1935. This was a, how many months before September, six or eight? And she said, I'm going to have Dr. Rudolph Bennett come up here and speak to our college class about what's going on at the university in a conservation curriculum. They've got a new program down there. And she said, and she might bring somebody with him. And so my dad and I were just like that. I was an only child. Everything he did, I did. I went with where he did, and he went with me. And we were great hunters. We liked to hunt together. Incidentally, anybody shoot quail in here? He was pretty good with the 410, honestly. Pretty good with a 410 on, on quail. But anyway, he was a true sportsman, but he had it in his blood. So he came out to that, that, that little session at the college there and listened to Rudolph Bennett expound on conservation and the new program in the conservation program at the University of Missouri. And guess who was with him? E. Sidney Stevens. No fun. Mr. Stevens was traveling with... Uh, Rudolph, they were both Harvard people. They, they had a immediate, and S Stevens really was not biology oriented, but he, was, he had a sense of understanding things that he didn't understand. He was anxious for more information. So he and Rudolph Bennett had developed a real close relationship. So when Rudolph was going out and making talks, advising people to come to the program here at the university. He had started in the early 30s. He took Reese and Stevens. Okay, my dad was there, and after all, after Bennett made his speech, uh, my dad was in the audience. He said, oh, what are you guys doing for supper? Well, they said, we don't have any plans. We had Sidney Stevens and, my, and Rudolph Bennett to my house 
for supper that night. And of course, Bennett uh, expounded. And you know what he did? He recruited me to the university that night. I was a year or so off, but he recruited me. And what did Mr. Stevens do? He expounded on what was getting ready to happen in Missouri with uh, an, an aroused citizenry about poor administration in the fish and game resource period. And so that went on. And so Dad immediately became vaccinated. Uh, there was a, 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 re, a, a leader in the Randolph County by the name of C.W. Hewlett. And a, and, a, and a friend of his was a Dr. L.A. Nickel. These two guys were dad's hunting and fishing buddies. Well, they ended up as chairman for the Federation in proposing and going for the amendment. So time moved along, and all of a sudden, all this stuff was being generated. And, and uh, so what happened? That uh, we began to churn out all this information, and dad and I began to put posters up all over uh, Randolph County, and we had friends down in Howard County, and they said, we need help, come down and help post the, the, the landscape with the, the um, uh, Proposition for deals. So that was the beginning of all that. So then, so they had the meeting here, it's September 10, 1935. And at that time, that Stevens was in Mobley, he said, why don't you come down to a meeting that we're planning in September. And Dad said, I'll try to come. So he came and he drugged me along. So that's the reason that I'm here tonight. Uh, it, uh, it was a good little story and um, it's true. And uh, I don't see many people around here that were here. <laughs> I, I, I really don't. <laughs> Well, well, anyway, I'm going to end this. Um, I went on, personally went on to a, a program with the, with the uh, game management and wildlife biology. Did well, came out with a master's, worked for the conservation department, went to work in 1941. Mr. Bodie and Ar Arthur Clark interviewed me, and I uh, uh, was uh, stationed at Fredericktown, working with Vernon Vern Bennett, the old, the old agent down there. And then they put me back in Columbia to said, well, we need to shape up a research program and so it got that's where it got started. So I was with the department 43 years and retired out in 83 and since then I've been pretty busy. Really have. I've kept <laughs> I really have. I, I haven't wasted much time. I have something to talk to you about just a second. I have a drawing here, a pencil drawing, shows a couple of ducks and so forth. And the signature is Ding Darling. Ding Darling was a Pulitzer cartoonist that um, ended up as a um, head of the, of the Biological Survey of the United States. He was a commissioner of wildlife in, in, um, in Iowa. He was um, a Des Moines um, register of, of, of artist. And he was at the meeting here in uh, September 10, 1935. He sat at the table with Henry Waters. Henry Waters, of course, was the editor and owner of the Columbia Daily Tribune. No, you all know Hank now. This was his dad. They sat at the same table. Naturally, they, they came together because he was a newspaper man with a Des Moines register, and here's Wyatt Waters with the Columbia Tribune. So they sat at the same table. In this room, had paper, paper, paper tablecloths. And he doodled. He doodled while the, everything was going on. And this is the picture. This is the original picture on that piece of paper tablecloth. And what happened after the meeting was over that day in this building, uh, Henry Waters, he tore out this piece of tablecloth with ragged edges and took it home with him, he folded it up and took it home with him. Later on, when the when the Henry Waters and his family decided to give a piece of land in Columbia here, 20 acres with his home and residence and everything to the conservation department. His widow told me she had something. Estelle 
She was, I just loved her. She was a piano player, and I'd go over to her house, and she'd say, I don't have anybody to play for. Will you sit down and listen to my concert? And I said, sure, I'll listen. <laughs> so anyway, she was a, turned out to be a great friend. But one day she said, I've really got something that's neat, and I don't know what to do with it. So he said, she said, here it is. It's, a, it's the drawing by Ding Darling that um, uh, Mr. Waters saved, and I'm going to give it to him. So immediately I took it back to the office, trimmed it out, took it down to the, um, to the um, um, frame makers. It was framed. This was in about um, uh, 1979, something like that. And so it's been hanging in the Fish and Wildlife Research Center on College and Stadium here in town. And not very many people have paid anything to it. When Dave and the bunch got, got me hooked into this meeting tonight, I said, man, I've got something. I've got the genuine artifact from this meeting. And it was done by a well-known national Pulitzer Prize artist. And so here it is. So we're, we're, I want you to come up and look at it. It is the genuine thing, and we're so proud. I think what I'm going to do, she gave it to me, folks. She gave it to me. But I think I'm going to give it to the Federation in a couple of years. Enough said. Enough said.